Tate so that the responsibility is changing or the other one was like having same messages that everyone can transmit or like having collective knowledge, asking each other for advice, being open and like this. So the idea was, yeah. And then we were like concluding that it needs so or so we need a lot of patience. That was <laughs> the thing we ended with. Okay, and last but not least, violence. Ada, please. Sure. Um, right, so we took it from the questions that you presented um, beforehand, basically the question uh, whether we can come up with a common uh, understanding of violence um, and uh, specifically whether we can make a distinction between uh, violence we can tolerate and violence we cannot tolerate and how we respond to those respectively. And then uh, we talked about uh, ways to prevent uh, violence and we specifically uh, engaged with the question whether it's possible to develop and uh, develop collectively and uh, with shared responsibility a protocol and how to implement that on, on violence and how to react to violence or respond to it. And as a third question, um, the <laughs> Uh, the, the question how to respond specifically and whether there, there is a way of developing a non-punitive approach to violence, one that perhaps brings uh, into communication and tries to, um, to transform rather than to uh, sort of draw a line and uh, tr uh, pretend to move on. Um, however, um, so we, we had a Bit of difficulties engaging in a, in a discussion for a, for a time and I think that is telling in itself but I'm not quite sure what it means but I, I thought it was uh, probably hinting to something and I yeah um, I would be interested in exploring that further actually uh, but uh, basically we came up with a couple of conundrums regarding those questions so there were, was no yes or no answer but uh, we certainly said that um, it's difficult to, to, to develop a common approach to violence that there are very, very different, uh, very many different um, understandings of what violence means and some of them might be uh, possible to tolerate, uh, but others um, would be very difficult and there would be uh, also that links to the second question of, uh, of developing a pro protocol or uh, so, uh, some form of uh, guidance um, if we try to distinguish between violence we tolerate and violence we wouldn't tolerate uh, because we would at some point have to name those uh, types of violence that we would tolerate and then uh, we might even invite, invite them. And uh, for the last question, um, uh, there, there was an interesting point that was brought up, the, the question about the non-punitive or punitive approach, um, and that referred to, uh, okay, this is difficult, but um, uh, basically, <laughs> There are lots of institutions or uh, there are lots of laws, et cetera, uh, in place within the institutions that uh, feminist movements have fought for uh, for a very long time. And uh, um, so we don't want to undermine those efforts and those successes uh, by uh, basically uh, circumventing them by adopting a non-punitive approach. Um, but at the same time, uh, there is where it works and where it's possible to transform, we should put a lot of effort into trying to transform um, and uh, also sharing responsibility for violence with the community or giving the responsibility back to all of community and not to individuals. Sorry, that was long. <laughs> okay, good, thank you. Um, so the idea now is to have a last round of impressions um, or especially we would like to hear if there's things that you think are missing in the conversation, things that you realize now that you wanted to say before 
or any dimension of these issues that we have skipped or um, yeah things like that or if not not just i don't know any any comment or on on any of the three issues yes ada you can you can sign like raise your hand in the chat if you want um. yeah thanks um there, there's just one uh thing that came to my mind and it's more of a methodological uh point i think um we had a very in, engaged discussion in the end in in our small group and we had lots of interesting um uh, kind of points of discussion uh at the start of the session but time went far too quickly <laughs> passed by and i think those three topics are far too many to be discussed in a two-hour session so if we want to continue with this i think it's worth focusing on one of the topics um because uh, i'd be very interested in hearing far more from the the other two groups and engaging in a, in a discussion of those topics now that we are almost uh closing I think we all agree. Imagine doing eight, as it was the idea at the beginning. So. <laughs> so, any other thoughts about the topics? Or we are going to do a short round of checkout before we we finish. But uh, about the topics themselves, is there anything missing? Anything you want to comment? Any other challenge you want to? include Senia, no? Yeah, yes. I, yeah. I, I will be short. I will try to be as quick as possible. Um, what would be interesting also for me to discuss in relation to power is how do we uh, address our own privileges inside the organization? and then how um, we take care that those who are unprivileged in our organization can kind of be empowered to have an agency. That would be uh, also for me uh, interesting in terms, of the, if, in terms of tools, how to um, ensure these kinds of things. Can you repeat the second one, Senia, please? Which was? Uh, the first was, how do we address our own privileges in our organizations? And the second one, sorry. How do how we ensure that uh, we empower the uh, people who are less privileged, but are part of our organization to have an agency? Like not only in the organization, but if we want to go publicly in a political arena, so this would be for me also interesting to discuss in the framework of power and leadership and violence in a sense and care <laughs> in this way i think that christian uh, she talked a little bit about uh, about their process and how how to how to um empower this this uh peripheral uh, people uh, to have agency in the in their organization so maybe in some way she can share i don't know a document or something but i think it's it's really interesting yes i would also like to say that in the report we tried to address that um topic from the point of view of also of diversity and intersectionality Although it's something that we are, we try to address all the time, but we there's a specific section to, where we try to do that, and it's very difficult, um, also to say things about those topics without taking without leading in those topics. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, just to say that, that that there might be a few ideas there, but we also find it very challenging. So any. Any other comments, maybe on issues that are that from other groups different from yours, or I mean, there's no need to say much more. But if you want, Angela, 
I'm, I, we're probably not going to solve this now, but I, I sort of uh, got really irritated by this um, violence, tolerate, to tolerate violence and, and, and uh, which violence should not be tolerated. I wasn't in the violence group, so I don't know what you talked about, but it's sort of a little black box for me, which le leaves me with a sort of rare feeling. So I don't know, um, maybe not now, or maybe I should read the report and it would be cleverer, but... No, it, it was also for us at the, at the very beginning when we started working on this uh, before. Uh, we use that expression because it's, it is one of the of, of the of the ways that uh, one of the municipalist organizations we we worked with, uh, Ciudad Futura, uh, may, uh, the, 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 that's the way they focused uh, a protocol to tackle violence, and they try to distinguish within the violence that somehow. Uh, can be collectively discussed as, for example, I don't know, symbolic violence, uh, the ways of the ways uh, sexist communication, uh, and because they, they think that with a with a work on pedag a pedagogic pedagogical work and discussion and collective uh, um, uh, work, uh, they can be turned into a, into learning tools, you know, into transformative politics, and on the other side, the the ones that they think that they are just that they can be tolerated and they don't have a room in the organization. But I, I know that the, 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 the idea of tolerating violence is, is, is shocking. But I think we need a broader debate on this. I totally agree with you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we are going to... I wanted to say oh. something. Just oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't sorry. worry. Very <laughs> brief. I was just wondering, I mean, as like two thirds of the people sitting here are um, within the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, I was just wondering um, when we start doing something about our own organization on these grounds and if that might be the next um, reason to meet and, and like be a little concrete and... Uh, debate all these uh, issues that you have in that great um, little brochure. Just an idea. Yeah, I, yeah, I would gladly be part of that group <laughs> to, write, to write a manual for RLS, like feminization of RLS. We could start, for example, having as many women on the panels as men or something like that, <laughs> which is not. Okay, so I think that uh, we are going to close. First, uh, thank you all of you for being here and sharing all your knowledge and experience and everything. Uh, as you know, this is an open process and, uh, and that uh, we wanted to, to share with you and we hope that this is going to go forward. Um, we hope that you are going to leave this meeting with more questions that you came <laughs> in with and uh, because uh, it, it means that we will work them together in a near future, I hope. And I see that Alex wants to say something. Um, yeah, just uh, like before, uh, before the meeting today, um, we were also talking about some kind of repetition of those workshops in the different regions we had. And I was just like, uh, wanted to take up this idea and ask if there, if you have already like more concrete plans on it or if we are just like, yeah. Yeah, I will jump in um, and say that, you know, like kind of logistic things, uh, we will get back to you with some notes about this in, in Spanish probably, but we will translate them into English. Um, we will send you three videos of three other 
women asterisk in the other three municipalities that are part of the network that the authors are in and um, in general we are more than happy to actually challenge the whole publication and the whole idea behind it and the smaller details and the smaller pieces so the bigger framework the smaller things whatever we are totally happy that um, we can i mean if you can read it it would be great if you think that you can spread it it would be great it will be in english and in german very soon it will be it's uh, already online version we will have it printed also so we are more than happy to actually send a lot of um, paper copies to any place in the world just let us know we will um, and maybe this is um, yes we can we can totally distribute this it's it's actually open and we will send you a dossier with I mean, you you have the link already in the in the invitation, so you can use that one. But we will send you again uh, the link to the to the PDF. We will send you the German the German version as well, in case it's useful for the German speakers and the German ambience. Um, and what else? Any work that we can support, like if you feel like give, taking something like this, but in your own local language to, I don't know, Latin America, Balkans, uh, Germany, any place, please let us know if we can help with that. We are more than happy to disseminate, speak about it. And if you need anything from us, we, we are happy to, to join um, in, in general. And actually Alex was already pointing at those uh, local presentations. We don't need to actually close them here, but think about them. And if you feel like having maybe exchanges or whatever format you like, we are more than happy to think uh, about them with you. And any further info, any exchange or questions that you might have also with the authors, we totally facilitate them and with the network that they are, that they are in. So um, everything very blurry. I consider this as a beginning. Um, we are super, super close collaborators and we know each other and this is why we don't have to reach any conclusion. Um, I like to open before we, before we close. So yes, let's be aware that we are in an open moment, that this is a new thing that, I mean, a new material, not a new thing or concept, but a new material that you, we can use. And I think that we reached our objective of, of actually presenting part of what is there. So yeah, thanks a lot. Um, and just a final round, if someone wants to say how they are feeling, just in one or two words, it would be actually great to hear how, how you're feeling as a wrap up. <laughs> Maybe you well, can start, Vera. What? Maybe you can start. <laughs> I, I think that this is, yeah, I feel overwhelmed because this is a never ending story. So I feel overwhelmed, but fine. <laughs> Okay, I would like to say that uh, I, I would like to thank you for you for you for your attention and your patience because uh, and, and this is something I've learned on the way uh, when speaking with all these different people engaged on the on the project and on the network it, that 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 at least for me is is useful also to to show your vulnerabilities and your insecurities and I was a bit nervous because I it was very difficult to try to to speak two years of work and a very very long report with a lot of details toolbox blah 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 whatever in 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 seven minutes in ten minutes and try to I'm trying to to, to to explain more or less I'm I'm be and and trying to be precise with the with the words and with the experience of other people especially when it comes to violence when you are speaking 
no, with the experience of people who have suffered it. So I would really like to thank you for for your for your for your attention, your patience, and your participation. It has been a very I felt like very secure and in a safe space to to work with people, nice people to work with. So thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I felt also a little bit um, uh, nervous at the beginning, but I felt like really cared in, in our working group and, and in all the, all the conversation. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you soon. say thank you very much it was uh, really interesting i could only read part of the um brochure yet but i'm looking forward to reading it uh, fully and um thanks for the opportunity and and all your work um i also wanted to say um thank you to everyone and um i would love to have at one other point <laughs> maybe not today but another point um have the opportunity not only like, yeah, of course, to talk about how we can implement it in our foundation, but also, I mean, like connecting the different time kind of projects we have, like in the European unit and in the Latin American unit and in the German unit or in the, <laughs> whatever you say. So we can like also, yeah, have this kind of conversation would be great. A lot of internal work in RLS to be done, huh? Yeah, so um, yeah, also thanks a lot. Um, uh, I guess it was great that we came in touch, but as Vera already said, this is just the beginning and it was good just to leave it that open. And we, of course, in the European unit um, are discussing um, how we could go on and we definitely will keep in touch with like you, the partners. Thanks a lot for that about it and as well communicate with you others. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to say thank you all and uh, I feel a bit overwhelmed. It was a lot of a lot of issues in a very different difficult topic that we are already also tired of discussing uh, or fighting for. So it's not it's not easy and I'm happy that that we have spaces to share those um, I don't know, at least those struggles and those interests and to see that um, it's not uh, I don't know we're not crazy just confronting our usual our daily practices but there's other people doing similar things or at least caring about the sim about similar things so thanks. Uh, I also uh, want to thank you for this, preparing this meeting. And I also uh, uh, would like to say that I'm happy that I met Angela and Birana here because although we live in the same city and kind of working in the same area, issues, issues, on the same issues, uh, we haven't had opportunity to meet like this. So I hope we will continue together, maybe, to work on these uh, uh, issues. And I have this feeling that we kind of rush through a lot of things. And as Vera said, I hope it's just the beginning. And I wish we would find a way again to, to talk more in depth about some things. And also, I would like to share that I would be happier if we are sitting together in Madrid <laughs> or in Barcelona <laughs> or somewhere on the seaside. So <laughs> I'm also hoping for uh, live meetings on this topic in the future. Fingers crossed for a quick solution for all this shit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, thanks. Uh, it's also very interesting to meet Xenia <laughs> online. Um, it would be nice even to meet you in Belgrade, just somewhere in the open. <laughs> and, yes. you know, we are all yes. tired of these Zoom sessions. Um, thank you for me. It was the first time uh, with all of you. And um, I, uh, my feeling is that um, 
Um, I look forward to reading the publication and actually coming back to all of you with some questions and maybe asking for advices when we have uh, some um, you know, concrete uh, uh, problems and to compare and illustrate with your solutions. Of course, we always end up having very much open questions and that's, that's good, but at the end of the day, we, we also need to um, have at least some tentative solutions. So very often we, we need some good examples. So thank you all. And I feel happy that I can consider you as a, as a community to uh, turn to. Mm -hmm. I also would like to thank you. I, I really, as although I haven't read the material totally, but what I have read, I think it's really, really useful. And I feel it's a process, it's a material which will be growing and strengthening with, uh, with the exchange and work with feminist movements. So um, I hope to stay in touch. And if you decide to make another meeting, I'm very gladly participating. And so far, I wish you a good evening. And thank you very much. I, can I speak? Uh, I also agree with Angela and with all my partners. I'm very happy uh, to have been here with you. And I think we have the same problems and the same struggles. And it, it was uh, very good for me to hear from all your presentation that I think it, they were very uh, complete and yes perhaps I'm a bit uh, overwhelmed but um, I think I have lots of questions uh, open questions for my to share with my partners here feminist movement in Argentina is is huge but it has a, a very I, I'm, I'm with my son here and it's difficult for me but <laughs> I, uh, feminist movement in Argentina yes. has lots of um, challenge also in the field of uh, institution, institutions and feminist of politics. Uh, and I think it would be great if we can keep this dialogue and also continue this dialogue with the activity that we are going to do in Brazil, but it won't be perhaps next year, it will be. And um, well, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I need to go with my son now. Adios, Flor. Gracias. Chao, querida. Gracias. Chao. Okay. So, yeah, let's go have dinner, right? Or a couple of years. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, you will chao, get chao. As soon. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you very much. Bye.